The following program is based on speculation and conjecture. Viewers should explore all sources of information before reaching their own conclusions. This is an example frame of a man pulling off a hoax. This looks like a man's gait and a man's walk. It's outrageous. I believed it. This animal is supposed to be over 30 tons. It doesn't even make a ripple in the water. What is that? It's kind of a crude attempt at a special effect. Billy Meyer is one of the world's greatest hoaxers. Billy Meyer films will all be done to draw people into this mindset of a cult. As I observe these people, they're clearly not medically trained people. I believe they're actors. I became the second doctor. There you can see for yourselves, I have been revealed. The rumor is that the more elaborate footage came from Germany. That is one of the greatest hoaxes of the 20th century. Ever since the infamous War of the Worlds radio hoax of 1938, people have come to recognize the danger posed by such fantastic and staged events passed off as real. But now, hoaxed photos and videos supposedly showing actual monsters, sea serpents, and aliens are being presented in record numbers, forcing believers and skeptics alike to work overtime to separate fact from fiction. Tonight, you will see the most sensational and ambitious hoaxes ever shot on film or video. And hear from inside informants as they tell how and why they know. These are all frauds. Stay with us as we investigate world's greatest hoaxes. Secrets finally revealed. What you are seeing is the most compelling footage ever shot of a creature purported to be Bigfoot. Shot by self-described Bigfoot tracker, Roger Patterson, in 1967. These 39 seconds of film have convinced many people that such a species exists. Repeated showings over three decades have ingrained these images into the public consciousness. Even commercials have been made about it as companies try to cash in on this apparently real image of a monster roaming throughout the Pacific Northwest. But is it real, or one of the greatest hoaxes ever filmed? There's no doubt in my mind that the Patterson film is a hoax. It is a human being in a fursuit. Cal Korf, an investigative journalist, has been researching the Patterson film for over 25 years. Look at this frame here. You can actually see a line going down here, which looks like either a zipper or, or again, a suspicious fur line. You can see on the body various patches of fur that are consistent with the suit. And there's no primate on the earth that has a fur line going down its spine. It doesn't fit. Though debates about the film's authenticity have raged for years, its origins date to October 20th, 1967, when Patterson allegedly crossed paths with the mysterious being. As it, uh, as I walked across his sand bar, I was able to get uh, uh, some fairly good footage of it. It turned uh, a couple of times and looked at us, and as it, uh, as it turned, uh, uh, it seemed to give me the impression that it didn't want uh, anything to do with us. It didn't run, it didn't uh, act scared, but yet it acted leery of us. While a clever hoax was immediately suspected, it is only recently that startling secrets about Patterson's film have been revealed. This Bigfoot film has been shown all over the world. Uh, it rather galls me because of the simple fact that it is one of the worst frauds ever perpetrated against the American public. Rancher and businessman Clyde Rinke makes this accusation after living with these secrets for almost 30 years. He has inside knowledge of the Bigfoot film hoax. In the early 70s, Rinke worked for American National Enterprises, or a and &E, a film distribution company in Salt Lake City. He claims that Roger Patterson also worked for the company. He was on the payroll uh, as a permanent employee, uh, salaried as a photographer. Ranky also says Patterson was told 
to deliberately fake the Bigfoot filming. They kept it real secret that they were doing this. According to Renke, a and &E executives recognized the marketing potential of the Bigfoot film. It was part of an ambitious promotional strategy to generate interest in a and &E's other wildlife features. They would put the Bigfoot film together with another film, such as Cougar Country, and the Bigfoot film itself would increase the attendance just tremendously. Renke explains that the Bigfoot in the Patterson film is nothing more than a large man in a monkey suit. He even identifies the man in the suit as Jerry Romney, a close friend of a and &E's former chairman. He's almost seven foot tall. He's a big man. He must weigh at least 250 pounds. To check out Renke's allegations, we visited with Jerry Romney at his home in Salt Lake City. He completely denied being the man in the Bigfoot suit. I didn't have anything to do with it, and I don't know anything about it, and I don't believe in it. Well, the only way that I know definitely it was Jerry Romney in the suit is because Jerry Romney told me so. He admitted it several different times to me and just said he had a lot of fun by doing it, except it was awful damn hot in there. Interestingly, Romney starred in a subsequent A&E film in 1972. He now wonders if this fact, coupled with his large physique, might have made Renke point to him. I guess maybe just because I'm pretty big and close to A&E and &E and had made this other movie with them, you know, and I knew all the executives very well. He just decided that was a good story, but that's not true. We filmed Romney walking up the street and compared his gait to the creature in the Patterson film. The stride and the long arms are clearly quite similar. Though this is by no means conclusive proof of Romney's involvement, one thing is certain. By repackaging the footage in various ways, a and &E continued to cash in on their sensational Bigfoot film throughout the 70s. It made them millions. Additional support for Renke's story was uncovered in a letter from Harry Campbell, a filmmaker in British Columbia. He claims that in 1967, Patterson boasted about shooting the hoax. The letter details the gorilla costume, the fake footprints, and the shaky camera. Unfortunately, we can't question Patterson himself. He passed away in 1972. But based on these revelations, along with Cal Corf's extensive analysis, there appears to be only one conclusion. This foot, as we see it here, could not have made the prints that were told were recovered at the site. It is not possible they don't match. The case for the Patterson film, if it were tried in a court of law by science, would be tossed out in five minutes for lack of evidence. It is a hoax. And it seems to have inspired a cottage industry of alleged Bigfoot evidence caught on tape. February 4th, 1992, this video was received in the mail by a Bigfoot researcher in Michigan with no letter of explanation. It was passed on to Bigfoot expert Larry Lund, who began an investigation. Now, we don't know exactly where this film was shot because there was no return address, no name or anything. The fact that the man didn't even want to tell us his name makes us think right away that this is more than likely a hoax. Now, here he looks to us like a man. This looks like a man's gait and a man's walk. The creature in the video walks back and forth among the trees, acting elusive. He seems to hide as the cameraman tries to get a clear shot. But incredibly, this supposed Bigfoot stays in the area instead of fleeing to safer ground. Why would a creature hang around like that if not for a better camera view? Uh, we think a wild creature would take off through the woods and would disappear. Enlargement of the creature suggests a man wearing a standard ape suit. And together with the bizarre pacing, most experts have deemed this case a hoax, plain and simple. Yeah, yeah. Early winter 1996, this mysterious video began to appear on television around the world. It purports to show a Yeti from the Himalayas, but it all looks too suspicious, starting with the creature itself. Look how the Yeti appears to be playing in the snow. Here, the creature gets up, looking rather clumsy, then starts up the hill. The Yeti appears to know when he's on camera. He's hamming it up like an actor an actor in a suit. It wasn't just the creature's man-like performance that created suspicions. Experts also questioned the tape's mysterious origin. 
We don't have the cameraman's name. We don't know where he shot it. We can't contact these people. We don't believe that. It's just like everything else. There is no basis, no fact to back up this film either. The mountainous terrain seemed out of place to scientist Jeff Meldrum. It was obvious to me immediately that this was not in the principal Himalayan range. The vegetation was inconsistent with the setting. In this report, Robert L. Fleming, a scientist who has traveled extensively in the Himalayas, also questions the legitimacy of the video. He says the vegetation and the snow conditions are both foreign to that region. And in his expert opinion, the Yeti in the film appears amazingly human. It all looks too good to be true, and it is. It's not Nepal, not the Himalayas, and not a Yeti. It's a hoax. The hoaxes are gonna be here a lot longer than we are. They've gone on all over the world. Every major continent in the world has a Bigfoot with a different name. Whether